Hello everybody. Today we are going to do a sample problem where we are going to deal with a weak acid and calculate the pH of a solution. So the problem reads how many grams of formic acid and I'm giving us the formula there for formic acid and the molar mass should be added to 500 milliliters of water to create a solution with a pH of 2.6. And We're also given the pKa. Remember the pKa, that is a value that you would go and you'd look up in a book somewhere. It's telling us about the equilibrium constant. However, we do need to do a small amount of manipulation to get the actual equilibrium constant. Like all equilibrium constants for any sort of solution, you're always dealing with molarity. And that's not a bad thing for us because actually, recall that the pH is just an expression of what the molarity of the H plus concentration is. So this is a problem where we are going to ultimately want to use an ice table and we do have some information about the equilibrium concentration that is embedded within here. And we'll be able to use that ice table. We will use our known equilibrium constant and we'll do a little backtracking and we'll find out what concentration we need of the formic acid once we know concentration of formic acid, we'll get how many grams we need. Okay, first thing of importance is that you should understand what the reaction looks like. We are going to have the acid dissociation of formic acid. So we have this species that is aqueous plus a water molecule is going to be in equilibrium because this is a weak acid. So it's not going to be complete dissociation with the conjugate base of formic acid plus the hydronium ion. When this thing is actually at equilibrium, I'll say again, the concentration of this is sitting right there. So we actually do kind of have this information. In fact, let's find it very briefly. If I want to know the concentration of H+, plus, I need to do 10 to the minus and then pH value. So 10 to the minus and then come see the pH value that I had is 2.60. That's going to equal that concentration of H plus, which in this case is 0 0.002512. That would be molar. Okay, so I've left room underneath my reaction so that I can make an ice table. So remember I for initial concentration, C for the change in the concentration, and E for the equilibrium concentration, which is relevant to that. I need to do this for all of the species that are involved in the equilibrium expression. My equilibrium expression is going to look like this. Ka is going to be equal to the concentration of the products, HCOO minus, H3O plus, remember that's the same thing as just an H plus, divided by my reactants. But it's any reactant that can change its concentration. Recall we don't put the concentration of water in there, that's not going to be changing. That's liquid water as opposed to aqueous, like these other three species. So given that I don't need to know anything about water, I can go ahead and leave it out. Now I'm going to start filling in the ice table. This, I'm going to call it I0, I initial amount of my acid. That's actually very related to the thing I'm trying to find here. That's a variable right now. I don't know what that is. Initially, as I'm dumping this stuff into some water, I don't have any of that species in there. There's not any of that conjugate base. And effectively, Assuming that this is neutral water, I don't really have any of that ion in there either. We know that even neutral at room temperature is going to be 10 to the minus 7 for the molarity of that. But that's going to be pretty insignificant in this problem. So I'm going to call that approximately 0. Things are going to shift to the right as soon as I put in my acid. So that means that I'm going to lose. I'm going to have some reduced concentration, minus x is going to be the change in concentration of my acid. But I'm going to be gaining on these other two species, so that's going to be a plus x. And over here I'm going to have a plus x as well. Acids and bases tend to have pretty simple stoichiometry, and so I know that for every one of these that I get, I'm going to get one of those, and that's for one of these that went missing. 
The equilibrium, remember, is always just the addition. So I have variable i0 minus x. Over here, 0 plus x is just x, and 0 plus x is just x. Now at first glance, it looks like we are missing information here. Like we have too many variables. But remember, that was the whole point in this thing over here, is that this is the equilibrium concentration of H plus, or the H3O plus. So that is the X value, and that can be filled in on all these other ones. In addition to that, once I have filled those in, those values are going to come here and get plugged into these different values of the equilibrium expression. So what I am going to need very, very soon here is I'm going to need to also know what the Ka value is. The Ka value is going to be equal to 10 to the minus 3.75, which is Ka equal to 1.778e minus 4. Okay, I've got some writing to do and I'm going to try to spare you guys of all of it. Ka, this value, that number is going to get plugged in right there. I not will remain a variable, but I'm going to take these equilibrium expressions. The I minus this value over here is going to get plugged into there. And then this number again is going to get put in two times up onto the numerator. Once here and once here. Okay, this is what the expression looks like now. This was the Ka value over here. Then I had x there, I had x there, and then this was i minus x in the denominator. So now you can see that I actually have a number in the numerator. That's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simplify this. There's quite a bit that can be done. The x and the x up here, this can be written as this quantity squared. I'm going to take this value, this entire denominator, and I'm going to multiply it up over into the numerator on the left. But instead of having to distribute this Ka value in, I'm just going to go ahead and take this value and I'm going to divide it over onto the right. So this entire quantity is a number that looks like this, if anybody's doing this at home with me. So now I just need to add this number to the other side of the equation. And I find that I naught is equal to 0 0.0380. And that would have units of molarity. And think back to the ice table that I had sitting there. That was the initial concentration of the species. As in, that's how much of this formic acid I actually put in. So we are really almost there with this problem. Recall molarity is equal to the number of moles divided by volume, where that volume has to be in liters. So I'm going to use that equation and have 0 0.0380 molar is equal to N, the number of moles of this stuff that I need, 0 0.500 liters, because I had 500 milliliters before. So N is equal to 0. 190 moles of formic acid and then I'll just do my unit conversion on it with the molar mass that was given in the problem. We have 46.025 grams per one mole and my final answer is going to be 0 0.87 grams of the formic acid. And there we go. I only gave two sig figs because remember these numbers in pH or pKa are not actually significant. It's only the back parts, only the parts beyond the decimal that are significant. Hopefully that problem made sense and if you think it did you should definitely let your computer know.